Moving on to the next wing. The last three, baby. We're getting to the, the top three in terms no, of got, heat you here. You got wing. Oh, man, I like the wings over the drum. That's okay. I won't complain. Sorry, bud. Too ding late. Up. Ding. Ding. Air ding. So this is the Los Calientes Rojo. Um, it's actually a personal favorite of mine. Smoked red jalapeno and uh, habanero peppers. Uh, it's quite, quite scrumptious. Oh, that does taste good. Mmm. It's got a nice smoky flavor, you know? I feel like the wise thing to do with hot stuff is to chew it slowly and don't swallow right away because I feel like once you get the heat back in your throat, that's when it gets you. Dude, my lips are really starting to burn. Mm. What about yours? You know, Andrew, I have a wife. She's gorgeous. <laughs> but I don't want to objectify her just for her beauty. She's a lot more than that. <laughs> well done. She likes she likes hot stuff, so I think I'm okay right now. She's, okay. she's trained me well. You're doing well. I'm doing good. That one's good. I actually think that this one might have been a little bit more spicy. Really? Yeah. Well, that could be true. Mild, um, whatever. Yeah. Are you okay. taking a drink of water? I, I mean, I don't need to, but if you want to take one, I'll take one for your sake. No, I'm fine. Oh, are you I'm sure? Fine. Are you no. sure? Okay. I, just, I mean, you've been doing a lot of talking. Maybe your mouth is dry. No, 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 no. Okay. I just want to take well, your spot, because you talk enough for the three of us here. Oh, <laughs> the three of us. <laughs> um, Wherever two or more are gathered, God is present. Oh, well done. <laughs> well done. So, uh, we, we've we just hit on hell a little bit already. Oh. We've mentioned it. But as the heat sort of simmers in your mouth, mm -hmm. it's really, uh, really making me think of that. hell a lot more. <laughs> and uh, so... I think with the smoky heat from the sauce filling our mouths, it's a good time to talk a little bit more about hell. So great. most people envision hell as some sort of like underground torture chamber where like Satan is there torturing all of uh, the bad people for all of eternity. Um, that is a bit of a imperfect caricature of what hell really is. There's a lot of wrong things with that picture. Medieval, maybe. Yeah. So what what do you think hell is really like? Yeah. Uh, that is actually a question. Um, well, I mean, what is hell really like? I don't think we necessarily have time to go into all the different views of hell, which I will hit on how my view plays a role into uh, the question I'm about to ask. But I think a question that I've been asked a lot lately maybe not a lot, but seems to be, it seems to have come up multiple times, is uh, not necessarily what is hell like, but why, why is hell eternal, mm. right? Why is, why is there an eternal punishment for a temporary rejection of God? I've gotten that question a lot. And um, it's a good question, you know. I, I mean, I, I, I couldn't sit here and tell you, oh, I know for sure what hell's going to be like, because hopefully I'll never find out. You know, I'm, pretty, I'm confident that I won't find out. So I'm not planning on finding out that way. But um, it's a really good question to ask, why, uh, why is the punishment of hell eternal when the rejection of God is only temporary here on earth? Because again, that just doesn't seem to coincide with what we experience every day. Uh, on earth. But I think, I think we can, uh, again, come to understand this question uh, by, again, examining the character of God, right? Again, it's like I said, there's going to be a theme here. You have to, if, if there's good evidence for, a, for the existence of this God, then examining his character is key because that kind of is a trickle-down effect as to how you basically answer all of these questions. Um, so, Again, the evidence shows that this is a holy God in every aspect, right? He is a holy, perfect, uh, vastly higher than any being we could ever imagine. Um, and we understand that even here on earth, um, when, when we wrong an individual, uh, the importance of that individual uh, um, plays a big role in, in the punishment, right? So, for instance, if I'm, if I'm walking on the street and I see Andrew walking down the street. And I just say, hey, there's a face that I'd just really like to punch, right? I mean, not that I would ever do that. You wouldn't be the only one. If I that. did do that, yeah. I would punch you. And if there was a cop there, I would get in trouble, right? I'd get in somewhat of trouble. I don't know what that would be, but whatever. I maybe get arrested. Um, 
if the president of the United States was walking down the street and I were to come up to him and punch him in the face, there would be a vastly different uh, punishment occurring, right? So we understand this even on a human level that uh, the, the, the importance of the individual does play a role in the, uh, in the uh, um, seriousness of the punishment. Okay, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, also, um, when you think about, uh, we understand that the gravity the gravity of the wrong or you know the crime if i'm punching you in the face the, the 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 gravity of the crime committed is what indicates the length of the punishment right the the how how bad it really is indicates how long it will be again so if uh if i if it only takes me uh if i wanted to murder andrew this time let's say shoot him in the head sorry but it's happening <laughs> Okay, if I wanted to do that, <laughs> okay, it would only take me how long? About two seconds to shoot you in the head, right? Uh, but I wouldn't spend two seconds in prison for that. We would spend a lot longer in prison. So again, the, the gravity of the wrong committed plays a role in the length of the punishment as well. So take into consideration now what, we're, what we've done when we sin against this God. Here is a holy being that we have offended. Uh, and so I think that even just on those two premises, that uh, his importance plays a role in the punishment and his importance plays, his holiness plays a role in the length of the punishment. I think that just simply by those two points, you can, you can surmise uh, that you, it, when you sin or wrong a eternally good God, a ter eternally holy God, that the punishment could be an eternal one. Um, but I even take it a step further to uh, uh, when it comes to my understanding of what hell is or what hell is actually like, uh, my theology of hell, um, is no, I don't think hell is just like this big torture chamber, you know, where, you know, the devil's just down there prodding you and <laughs> God's just turning up the temperature every century or something like that. Like, I don't think that's what happens. In fact, I think um, rather it's what Jesus says in John 8, uh, 24, where he says that uh, he's talking to the Pharisees and he says that you will die in your sins. Okay, so this is, this is again, not trying to get too much into the theology of this, uh, this is a lot darker than just physical pain in a sense. He's saying, Jesus is saying that you're going to die in your sins. So when you go to hell, you are going to continually choose your sin over God for all of eternity, right? So if you're following that, that also, along with what I just said before, would also uh, um, answer the question as to why hell is eternal because even right now, anybody who's in hell is right now choosing their sin over God, rejecting, which would qualify them for hell. So they're like re-upping their punishment right. again and again, day again after day. Again. Yeah. Freely choosing it, too. It's not yeah. like God is forcing them to. They're choosing it because they're dead in their sins. Yeah. So I've, I've, uh, I've been reading a little bit on this subject, and uh, it's talked about how hell in the Bible is not pictured as some sort of underground torture chamber that's locked from the outside and people can't get out. It's a place outside of God's holy city uh, where people go because they've rejected uh, God's invitation to not go there. Yeah. Um, and it's more like a coffin that you're latching shut from the inside yeah. and locking yourself in that's rather good. than God holding yeah. you in there. Uh, there's nobody in hell that's like begging God for mercy yeah. and saying, hey, let me out, please. I'll trust you. I'll believe in you if you'll just let me out. Yeah. Uh, we are dead in our sins, as you said, uh, if we die without Christ. Yeah. And so we are, God is simply allowing us to choose our sin. Yeah. And that's, in a way, the most merciful thing he could do. Um, yeah, so that. Great answer, but I hadn't uh, thought about some of those reasons for the eternality of hell, yeah. so that's good. Yeah, it's, I, what was it? I was going to say something. Um, it's, it's like the old classic line that uh, God doesn't, God, we're, we're freely choosing this, right? I mean, God's not forcing us into hell. Rather, on the contrary, he's not forcing anyone into heaven in that sense. Yeah. 